In this video, we'll talk about interleukin-2 and its role in immunity. Stay tuned till the end. It's a high yield video for USMLE step 1. Interleukin-2 belongs to hematoprotein family of cytokines and the characteristic of this cytokine that it has four helix bundle. So there are different kind of receptors with different affinities for interleukin-2 family of cytokines. So the three receptor elements are interleukin beta, gamma and alpha. If all of these three are present, this is the highest affinity receptor configuration. Then there is interleukin-2 receptor beta and gamma. And lastly, there is interleukin-2 receptor alpha. So if in terms of affinity, the highest affinity is when three of these chains are together. And the lowest affinity is when interleukin-2 receptor alpha is alone. Question is, which of these configurations are found in which type of cells? Generally, CD4 positive T cells has high affinity and lowest affinity configurations, whereas the intermediate affinity configurations are present in the NK cell. Now, you must be wondering that, okay, we understand the concept behind high affinity interleukin receptor to be present in the T cell. But what is the effectiveness of bringing in some low affinity receptors? It turns out that these low affinity receptors actually sequesters more and more interleukin-2 on the surface of the T cell. And whenever it is necessary, it transfer it to the high affinity receptor configuration. And this high for affinity receptor is required for transmitting the nuclear signal. So this is how overall the interleukin-2 family cytokines work. Now let's try to understand the biological and immunological context where IL-2 mediated signaling is really important. And it is straightforward important in context of T-cell activation. So T-cell activation begins with antigen recognition. That T-cell can recognize from the MHC2 bind peptide on a dendritic cell or let's say a macrophage. So after it recognizes that, it would eventually be activated. Once activated, it can activate a B cell. Both activated T cell and B cell would lead to uh, cell cycle re-entry and they would proliferate massively to increase their number. Eventually B cell would form plasma cells and T cell would be differentiated into subtypes. Okay, so this entire molecular process would be important to understand. And now we are going to focus on this event of um, the dendritic cell and T-cell interaction. So the first interaction happens via MHC2 present on dendritic cell and T-cell receptor present on T-cells. So this is the signal one. Then there are interactions like CD80 or 86 and CD28 present on the T-cell. This give rise to the signal two for activation. And lastly, there is a signal three, which is coming from the interleukin two and interleukin two receptor mediated autocrine signaling. So all these three signals has to be there in order for it to get activated and re-enter the cell cycle. Once re-entered, it would lead to proliferation. So basically T cells would increase in number and proliferate or, or expand clonally. This is called clonal expansion. Now, so, Quick question is, what would we know in terms of knowing this thing? It turns out interleukin-2 receptor antagonists are heavily used in context of uh, autoimmune disorders and work like an immunosuppressant. So you can clearly understand if interleukin-2 receptor mediated co-stimulatory signal is not there, T-cell activation would be improper. And in case of autoimmune disorder, T-cell activation is a big problem. So autoreactive T-cells harm the own body. In this context, there are several um, antibodies such as baciliximab can actually bind to the interleukin-2 receptor and prevent normal interleukin-2 to interact with the receptor. So obviously, the co-stimulatory signal is not transmitted. That lead to um, not activation of the T cell. So basically, it has a lot of side effects though, like edema, hypertension and tremor, but it's a pretty potential therapy. Other thing is like targeting the downstream effectors of the interleukin-2 receptor pathway. So interleukin-2 receptor activation would lead to mTOR activation. mTOR is a master regulator of anabolism. It would lead to growth, proliferation, division, etc. So this mTOR can be uh, basically blocked by specific um, agents that can also work like a uh, immunosuppressant. And mTOR inhibitors would block the nuclear signal and thereby prevent T-cell uh, proliferation. 
So I hope this video was useful. We understood what interleukin-2 is important for and how interleukin-2 receptor antagonist can be used in as a therapeutic molecule. So please share and subscribe to the channel. Support our channel using super thanks and see you in next video.